Welcome back to the American Legends Watch Channel. No watch gets me more compliments than a panda-style racing chronograph. Why spend tens of thousands of dollars on a Rolex Daytona? Why spend thousands of dollars on an Omega Speedmaster Racing coaxial chronograph? Why spend one to two thousand dollars on a beautiful Hamilton Intramatic with their mechanical movement inside when you could spend two or three hundred dollars on one of these budget but awesome panda style chronographs that you can pick up for cheap and are also awesome. So here for you today, I've got three alternatives for you to consider. I've been dying to compare these for you. So in increasing order of price, let's start with the Merker Pierre Paulin. which you can get for less than $200, even with this sapphire crystal. And the real treat is on the back. This is a mechanical column wheel chronograph. Very snappy action, absolutely drop dead gorgeous. You'll get a lot of compliments on the front. If you take this off and show them the back, you'll get even more jaw dropping from people looking at that stunning mechanical movement they've bought from the Swiss back in 1963-ish and have been making ever since with only some minor adjustments to it, some variations on, on, on inside you'll see on some of these different 1963s, but I don't think any of them do as good of a job as this with just showing off the movement. On the front you get a running second hand there, which I like. I like to be able to see that running seconds on a panda chronograph. You get a uh, manual wind in, when the crown is all the way in. Pull it out, that out. So it's a non-hacking movement. That's a little bit of an issue. And then on the right register, you get the uh, minutes that have elapsed. And I think that's a very easy to read minute scale. It goes to 30 minutes and it runs continuously. It won't stop. So if you go past 30 minutes, it'll just count the next 30 minutes, and so on. And I really like that from a chronograph. You'll also see this has the interior tachometer scale. Downside of that is the numbers are really small. But the plus side of having an interior tachometer scale inside of the crystal on the dial is that the chronograph hand then actually intersects that scale. And when you stop it, then you can actually read off of there. So right now we're at about 91. So if you were timing a mile that a race car just went by and you stopped it right there, you'd say, oh, they're going 91 miles an hour. It is obviously mechanical and it's hand winding movement and that might be a downside to some people who don't want to fool with servicing in the future, who would be aghast at, at wanting to wind this up every day. And uh, the water resistance here is not gonna be very good. I wouldn't hesitate to get this wet. That's not a screw down crown. Uh, you wouldn't want to get water in there. It'd be very, very bad news. Another feature I like on this is it has drilled lugs. So you can swap out these 18 millimeter straps with whatever else you might have in your collection and good to go. All right, next in order of price is the Dan Henry 1964. The Dan Henry and the Yamaha that I'll show in a second are both Seiko Mecha Quartz movements, which means there's a battery inside. You don't get a see-through case back. You get an awesome embossed case back here with the race car on it. They do a really good job. You can even see details on the spokes if you look in there very closely. You have to change the battery every maybe three to five years or so, depending on how much you use the chronograph. One feature I do like on the Dan Henry is that blued chronograph hand. It actually has a white tip on it. So if you start the chronograph function and you stop it anywhere, you'll see that white tip again on that interior tachometer scale, which does make it easy to read. And that blue's really pretty. It really does catch the light at certain angles. Unlike the Pierre Paulin, the registers here are different. So the left register here is gonna show you a 60 minute counter, which I find much harder to read than the 30 minute counter. Let's say 14 minutes have gone by. It's difficult for me to see a 14 versus 
15. Difficult to see one minute versus two minutes on that 60 minute scale. So not a fan of that. The scale on the right is 24 hour time, which I find completely useless on a chronograph. You have to put something there. These movements don't have a running seconds like the, uh, the mechanical uh, seagull movement does. So they had to put something there and they put this 24 hour time. I would have much rather seen a ticking second hand than this 24 hour time, which doesn't do a lot for me. Design cues are very similar between the Pierre Paulin and the Dan Henry. So if you want to go with mechanical, the Pierre Paulin would be an awesome option. If you want to go with the battery based Mecha Quartz movement, then the Dan Henry is an awesome option. They're both 38 millimeters, both with the interior tachometer scale. Both have piston head pushers, both have signed crowns. Uh, the Pierre Paulin does have the drill lugs I mentioned, where this, as the Dan Henry does not. That brings us to our third option. The third option here is just a little bit more money. You can get yourself a Yema Rally Graph. This is slightly larger at 39 millimeters, has 20 millimeter straps. Again, as I mentioned, a Seiko Mecha Quartz movement inside. Instead of a race car here, you get the beautiful Yema Heraldic Crest they've been using for ages. Again, you get piston head pushers, a signed crown. But the biggest difference here is the exterior tachometer scale and the slanted eyes of the Panda, which is uh, a really an eye catcher. But unfortunately, it does make the hour hand and the minute hand frequently overlap those corners, which is a hindrance to the legibility. It's the same movement inside, so my same criticisms of the sub-dials that I had on the Dan Henry I have here on the Yema, where that 60-minute counter is harder for me to read. But because that sub-dial is a little larger, and because that hand on there has that arrow point to it rather than just the stick, I find it's a little bit easier to read on the Yema. I do think the exterior tachometer scale is easier to read because the font is larger. Uh, you get a little bit more markings here uh, on the scale itself depending on what range you're looking at. However, the drawback is that chronograph hand never actually intersects that scale because the chronograph hand is inside. So you have to line up the red tip yourself, and let's say we stop here, try to read off of that, and well, it looks like we're in the ballpark of 275 units per hour. Hope you're measuring a rocket ship, maybe you're going that fast. The red tip does help with lining up, uh, and I do like the exterior scale, uh, made famous on the Omega Speedmasters. One of the first watches to use that exterior tachometer scale. So if that's something that you like, that's a design cue you like, here's a great bargain that you can get in this price range. 39 millimeters, very wearable. Comes with this awesome Milanese strap, has a signed buckle on there, also comes with a very good quality leather strap that has the yellow, uh, Yema and French uh, colors on it. It's 20 millimeters, so really uh, versatile when it comes to straps. Would look awesome on lots of different combinations. But unfortunately, no drilled lugs. So in, speaking of straps, I mentioned the Yema comes with this great Milanese strap. Also comes with the leather strap. Curiously, the leather strap it comes with is not perforated. The Dan Henry comes with a beads of rice strap, and it came with a leather strap that I didn't like either. Also seemed really thin. So I got this aftermarket strap for it. This is really nice strap here from the folks at Mon Straps. Uh, this version of the Pierre Paulin comes with a thin but supple uh, strap here on a deployant. So ultimately, what should you go with? Well, again, if you're uh, into mechanical watches and you want to see that display case back, this Merker Pierre Paulin, definitely the way to go. Awesome styling, great wearability, 38 millimeters. Love the uh, sub dials and the running seconds and the 30 minute counter. Great, great, fantastic bargain. Maybe the best bargain in all of mechanical watches right now with that column wheel chronograph and everything going on here. Fantastic, totally recommend the Pierre Paulin. 
you don't want mechanical and you're trying to decide between the various mecha quartz options out there both the dan henry and the m are both great options again some of the things that you might want to look at are the interior versus the exterior tachometer scale which one of those you might like if you really like the slanted panda eyes that's an eye catcher the straps that come with the emma really good that extra one millimeter of size really does make a big difference it wears quite a bit larger with the 39 millimeter and that exterior attack scale just kind of makes it feel larger you get 20 millimeter straps to go with that so a lot going for the yama it's also going to stay in production you won't have trouble finding one but if you want to go micro brand if you like what dan henry's doing and i'm a big fan of the 1964 uh, you can get the panda the evil panda date or no date you get the blue hand on there yeah, there's a lot going for the dan henry the case back is really really nice they do a great job with these case backs for just a few hundred dollars you can get any of these why not get more than one? I'm probably going to wind up uh, moving one or two of these myself. I did have the acrylic version of the Pierre Paulin. Uh, I sold it. I missed it. I found on the Reddit Watch Exchange a great deal on this Sapphire one. Picked it up. I love seeing that movement. I'm trying to keep on to that and not, not let it go. The Yema may be on the chopping block. The Dan Henry might be on the chopping block for me. It's hard to justify having three panda watches in the collection. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Is there a favorite that you have? If, if you've been looking at panda watches, I hope this review has been helpful. If there are other things that you're considering looking at in this same design space, would love to hear your feedback, your comments below. Hope you liked and enjoyed this video, found it useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help, a, help me out as I'm trying to build a channel and work towards launching some of my own designs in the future. For right now, though, we'll leave it here. So God bless and have fun out there.